Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. So another lockdown news roundup for you today. First up, we have yet another big company, Supermarket, coming out and saying they have rules for you to follow. Tesco have come out this morning and said they have six new rules you must follow if you want to shop at Tesco's. It had to be six rules. Always has to be the number six. These companies, have you noticed, are getting more authoritarian by the day. Banks saying they will close your account for not wearing a mask and supermarkets all now coming out and instructing you with these orders. And you notice that these companies are quite all essential to living, like money and food. It says here, Tesco has emailed customers to outline six rules that all shoppers must follow. It says here, Jason Tarry, the CEO of Tesco, has instructed that the six rules are must wear a face mask in store, you must shop alone, one in, one out, wait for the green light, sanitize your hands, your basket and your trolley, and then there's something about online shopping which which doesn't sound like a rule to me. Did you notice back in March, April, when all this kicked off, that those traffic lights in the supermarkets appeared out of nowhere at the front doors? I mean, those were manufactured really quick, weren't they? They couldn't have been cheap to manufacture them. And they were installed at a very early time when government ministers were saying that everything was going to be normal by May or June. In other news, Boris Johnson yesterday answered questions. And there was this one part I just thought was so contradictory in what he said. It's a bit like the elephant in the room with all of this jab rollout talk. This is the one thing that the mainstream media and the government don't really address. And it's, it's kind of important, you know. But listen to this first. They talk about how they need the jab to be taken up by 75% of the population for them to achieve their targets, they say. And how Boris says he is encouraged by surveys. And then the second question, he is asked, how long will it be till people that have received the jab, how long will it be before they are let out and can go back to their normal lives and not get infected or transmit it? To which Boris answers, I don't know. Why do they not know? I mean, surely they would have an idea from the trials. And if they don't know, how do they know that they need 75% to achieve a target? Here's the clip. Uh, The Public Accounts Committee learned that the the assumption in your programme is that there needs to be 75% take up of the vaccine to hit the targets and getting that 75% as the programme progresses is going to get harder and harder unless everybody's cooperating and helping. That, that, Sir Bernard, you put, the, you put your finger on the, the, on the point. Uh, for the vaccine programme to be uh, as successful as we want it to be, uh, we must ensure that uh, people uh, are encouraged to, to come forward for, for testing and, and they have every reason to be confident and, and, and happy in, uh, in doing so. And actually, some of the, we're seeing some very encouraging data showing that people are more and more enthusiastic about being vaccinated uh, rather than, uh, than, than the reverse. And just very briefly, one word answer required. When will we know whether the, those vaccinated are safe to let out that they can't spread the, 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 the virus? When will we know that the vaccine actually enables people to go back to their daily lives? Well, I, I think what I, I can't tell you about transmission yet, uh, but as soon as we have that data, we'll uh, of course be publishing Thank it. Thank you. Robert Halfon. So Boris doesn't know. If everything is how these people are saying, surely it's kind of important to know this. Here is the head of Immunisation of Public Health England saying, again, that they don't know. So far, the information that we're getting from the studies suggests that the vaccines are really highly effective, but they're not 100% effective. And it's possible that you could still get COVID after having been vaccinated. It's very likely, however, if you do get it, it's going to be much less severe than it would have been if you hadn't been vaccinated. But because we know the vaccine isn't 100%, it is still very important that we continue to take measures to prevent the spread and prevent you catching it or giving it to someone else. So we have to remember the normal advice, the regular advice we've been following for these last few months, which is all about washing your hands, wearing a mask and keeping your distance. And here she is again talking to Science Technology Committee yesterday saying that England may follow a focused protection strategy 
where protection is given to the vulnerable and the disease is allowed to circulate among the young where it's not causing much harm, which is kind of opposite of what the government are saying. Is it likely the entire population is going to need to be vaccinated? You mentioned 60 to 70%, or will there be certain categories, age groups that we just decide are likely to be more asymptomatic and therefore don't need it? Yeah, I think it depends a bit on what we want. We may need to accept if the vaccine doesn't prevent transmission that we're going to have, we're going to protect the people who are really vulnerable and going to die and have serious disease, but we allow the disease to circulate in younger people where it's not causing much harm. That may be the situation we go to, like we are with things like flu, that we accept that a lot of people get flu, but we protect those who are most vulnerable. That may be the outcome. I'm hoping it will be a bit a bit better than that. Um, but you're right, if we, if, if the we may need to vaccinate very high proportion of the population in order to prevent this disease ever being a problem again. And I think that's, that's some way off yet, and there's a lot of data we need before we can go to that stage. So is this a sign they are changing tack and are not looking to jab 75% of the UK population? I don't know. In other news, looks like quite a number of the elderly people are not turning up to get the jab. Here we have in the mirror, at least 70 people failed to turn up for jab at surgery as vaccine is rolled out. Despite efforts to roll out the Pfizer medicine, 70 people aged over 80 have already missed their scheduled appointment at a single surgery in Kent. So that's, that's quite a lot because they can only fit in so many a day because they have to wait, what, 10 to 15 minutes afterwards to make sure there are no side effects. So that's quite a large number for a single surgery. Now, the way this article is written, I feel this is somewhat shameful as they are trying to make those that have been asked, who haven't turned up, make them feel guilty for not turning up and that they are wasting the medicine and causing all kinds of difficulties. Yet, you know, maybe they just don't want to get it. I mean, they do still have a choice, don't they? It says here, dozens of pensioners missed their jab at scheduled appointments in Kent, it has been revealed. It is understood there is only a two hour window to find another patient before the precious jab becomes unusable. It said, no jabs have been wasted to date thanks to quick thinking staff calling in other patients at short notice. A spokesman said the team rallied round and other patients took their place, so none were wasted thankfully, but when numbers like this fail to arrive and a call goes out to others waiting, it can cause unnecessary congestion at the site. And it goes on. But these scheduled appointments are being handed out automatically, and these surgeries are presuming that everyone will want to get it. That obviously isn't the case, otherwise they would all be there. And it seems a bit churlish to be accusing old people of being irresponsible and selfish for not turning up for something that they haven't actually asked for or requested. You've just sent them an appointment in the post. That's how this is working. If you're over 80, you get an appointment sent to you in the post. They're not actually asking them if they want it first. Maybe if they asked them, they would get a better idea of who and how many will turn up. Just, just from a logical perspective, this way for them to go about this seems a bit stupid. And then they complain when people haven't turned up. In other news, yet another country has announced a health passport. That's uh, Denmark, UK and now Poland. Like clockwork, all in the same week. And this passport will only be handed out to those who get the jab. It says here people who get jab in Poland will receive a confirmation document, a jab passport, after having received a second dose, according to Polish Deputy Health Minister Anna Golowaska. Poland is the latest country to welcome the idea of a health passport as many member states consider solutions to restart cross-border travel. It says consider, as many member states consider. Yeah, they're all considering it now. Yet at the same time, they've all been planning it and producing it for many, many months. It must be obvious now, these policies are not being made by individual countries, but by a united agreement between them all. Surely no one can doubt that now. As always, thanks for listening. As YouTube are very fond of cancelling channels like this one or suspending them, come over and subscribe to my new website, hugotalks.com, so I can keep you up to date with my daily posts. And I'll see you later.